Linda McAlphin. Today we're at 30 Cutler Street in Warren where I have my studio. I'm a photographer and mixed media artist and founding member of Imago. I began working as a traditional photographer about 40 years ago. Over the years I've moved into digital photography and most recently been experimenting with collage and mixed media on non-traditional substrates. I began working on the water series last fall as I was taking walks along the Warren waterfront. I was experimenting with, an I with iPhone video for the first time and became intrigued with the way the water looked. What was interesting about the water was the way it kept changing, moving, reflecting light. It also made it very challenging. So once I had the photographs, I began thinking about how I was going to present the work and really capture the essence of water. So I started experimenting with a number of different substrates. I knew I was interested in a digital transfer print because that's what I've been working with for the past several months. But I didn't know what I would print it on. So I experimented with print paper. I experimented with traditional photographic paper. I experimented with wood and metal. And in the end, I decided to work with stone paper. Stone paper is an interesting substance because it is made out of stone. It does not absorb any liquid. So when you apply the transfer print to the stone paper, it rests in a liquid film on the surface of the paper and has qualities that are very similar to water. So right now, what I'm doing is cleaning the edges, making rough, roughening up the edges, actually, of a digital photograph that I've printed in reverse on transparency film. Pigment inks are actually water-soluble. So I'm using water to remove the edge of the ink, so I no, will have no hard edges when I apply the print to the stone paper. So now that the print with the softened edges is dry, I'm going to position it on the stone paper where I'd like the ultimate print to appear. So you can see I'm centering it in the paper, and then I'm going to just tape it into position so we make sure we get it in the right position. So you can see it's really just hinged here so that it will lay down on the paper evenly. The next step is to stick this is what we call Stone Age Super Soft Solution, which will release the ink onto the paper. And so I try to work pretty quickly because it will actually start releasing within a couple of minutes. So I'm painting the solution in an even layer the print. And it's very important that you try to get an even and complete layer. Now, if you don't, there'll be places where the ink doesn't release and you'll have holes in your print. Now I'm going to lift it up in the corners. work the edges to make sure I get the air bubbles out and that there's contact with the paper and every corner of the print. That's about all I can do with the roller. If I, if I start doing more with the roller, it will, have a, a, it will start lifting up the ink in ways that I don't want it to. So you can see I'm going to try to move some of these bubbles the side, but I'm being very gentle with it. Just trying to smooth out these bubbles just a little bit to make sure that the ink is laying down as much as possible on the paper. Some of the bubbles are okay, and I'm not going to be able to get rid of them. And that actually helps create the water effect I was looking for. This is an example of the black and white traditional photography I was doing about 15 years ago. It was taken with a medium format camera, and I call this the shell series. As you can see, I'm interested in uh, looking at natural objects um, in a very abstract way. I like to go very in very close often to look at what I'm photographing, and I'm trying to capture the essence of these very traditional things that many people look at and many people photograph or, or make art from. But I'm trying to see them in a new way, a way to kind of 
that captures, for me, the essence of the shell or essence of the water. So last summer I was working on a series of water images and I was using the stone paper. particularly liked the stone paper for the water images because the transferred image was resting as a film on top of the stone paper. It wasn't absorbed into the paper. So in a sense, you had these kinds of folds and bubbles that would happen as the film lay down on the paper. So more recently, I began working with some tree images. And I began with a stone paper similar to what I was using when I was working with water images. And you can see I'm getting some interesting folds as I transfer the print onto the paper. But I um, was wondering as I, I started working whether whether wood might be a better medium. So what I've done more recently is begun to experiment with the same images on wood panels. And as you can see, I'm beginning, I do get, still get some texture as it goes onto the wood, but it looks a lot more natural. I'm thinking this is a better solution for the tree images. In terms of the process, I, you can see I began with a wood panel that I painted and have sanded and then repainted again. So this will be the basis and um, I'll in this case, I'm looking at a different image. It's got a lot more black and white in it, so I've prepared a more silver-toned um, uh, substrate. And you can see I'm um, kind of playing around with how I want to crop the image onto the wood panel. This is another tree image. It's in an encaustic medium, which is a medium that's brand new for me, but one that I'm finding very intriguing, and I think it's a direction I'm going to be moving in in the future.